स्टैंडिंग वेव्स एंड नॉर्मल मोड्स लेट सी वट आर स्टैंडिंग वेव्स एंड नॉर्मल मोड्स नाउ इफ यू हैव टू रिजिड बाउंड्रीज दिस इज फर्स्ट वन एंड दिस इज सेकेंड वन एंड बिटवीन दैम देर इज एनी थ्रेड और अ स्ट्रिंग और अ रोप फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन केस ऑफ गीता इफ दिस इज अ स्ट्रिंग देन द वाइब्रेशन विच आर प्रोड्यूस्ड हियर ओके दे आर रिस्ट्रिक्टेड बिटवीन दीज टू ends and a and and b the waves will be like this produced for example this and or you can have like this okay now this is the length of the string l such waves which are restricted between the two ends here rigid boundaries these are standing waves they are not moving anywhere they are not going anywhere they are just produced here and they will die here so these are standing waves these points where the amplitude of these waves is minimum is known as nodes let me write here nodes nodes are those points where amplitude is zero amplitude is zero is called as nodes these are maximum displacement of the particle which is the amplitude okay and this whole thing is known as anti node this is known as anti node what is anti node maximum displacement anti nodes maximum displacement so we will make use of this at the end of this derivation so if a wave is produced it is here superimposing on each other one is reflected wave and one is incident wave so the resultant of let me first write the incident wave y i x t incident wave that is equals to a sin k x minus omega t what is the wave function of a reflected wave just now we did that will be equals to a sin k x plus omega t because it is moving in the opposite direction so when a reflected wave okay it superimposes on the incident wave we get such vibrations or modes we will discuss this modes for a string later on so let's see what will be the resultant so resultant by superposition principle will be y xt will be equals to incident wave plus reflected wave and when you add both it will be a sin kx minus omega t plus a sin kx plus omega t and on adding both of them what can be common here a and this will be sin kx minus sin kx minus omega t plus sin kx plus omega t let me write the formula for sin a plus sin b so sin a plus sin b that is nothing but 2 sin a plus b by 2 cos a minus b by 2 let's use this identity over here so this will become a sin let me write 2 in front so this is 2 sin a plus b a will be kx minus omega t plus kx plus omega t whole divided by 2 and cos kx minus omega t minus kx plus omega t whole divided by 2 using the identity now next is let's simplify further so let me take this two outside it will be 2a sin when you expand the bracket kx and kx will make it 2kx omega t and omega t cancels out so you left it upon 2 into cos here kx and minus kx cancels out you left with minus omega t so minus twice of omega t whole divided by 2 now further we know that cos of minus theta is plus cos theta and 2 2 cancels out in both the cases you left with 2a sin kx into 
cos omega t. Now this is our resultant wave function. Now we know that at nodes our amplitude. So what will be the amplitude in this? In this case amplitude is this part. This is the amplitude of resultant wave. The wave after we get superimposition of first incident wave and the reflected wave. So in this case at nodes because nodes are quite crucial points. So at nodes amplitude is 0. Amplitude is 0. In that case 2a sin kx this will be equals to 0 and if it is 0 sin kx will be equals to 0 taking 2a on the right hand side. For what angle sin is 0? So sin is 0 at 0 degree at pi at 2 pi at 3 pi 4 pi 5 pi 6 pi and so on. So we can say that sin n pi is 0 so this is equals to sin n pi. So kx is equals to n pi where n can be any value or x will be equals to in this particular case when the string is attached to the two rigid boundaries it will be n pi by k. Let's substitute the value of k which we learnt in previous lectures. So x will be equals to n pi upon 2 pi by lambda. So lambda goes on the top and pi pi cancels and we left with x is equals to n lambda upon 2. In this case our x is nothing but the length of the string. So maximum l will be equals to n pi by n lambda by 2 and that will be responsible for different modes. Let's understand now modes here. What are the different modes and what do you mean by L equal to N lambda by 2? Let's understand the first one. So in the first case, for N equal to 1, for N equal to 1, L equals to lambda by 2, which means you can have either one single crest, this is half a wavelength, or you can have a single trough, lambda by 2 is half, half of a wavelength. And in case N equal to 2, for n equal to 2 in this expression, let me put it in a box, n equal to 2, l will be lambda, for n equal to 2, l will be lambda, 2 by 2 cancels, so lambda will be nothing but a single crest and a single trough like this or it can be reflected one, so a single trough or a single crest. Putting n equal to 3. So putting n equal to 3, this will take it as 3 lambda by 2. So 3 lambda by 2 means 3 by 2 is 1.5. 1.5 means 1 and half. 1 and half, one complete wave and half a wave. So it can be like this, one complete wave or a single crest, one complete wave or a single trough. Let's go. It can go for n equal to 4, n equal to 5, we will get different modes of vibration. Now n equal to 1, <coughs> l will be lambda by 2, here l will be lambda and here we got l equals to 3 by 2 lambda. Similarly, if we cross multiply, lambda will be 2 l here, lambda is l here and lambda here is 2 by 3 l. If we know the wavelength, we can find the frequency of such vibrations by using the formula for speed is equals to, I am writing it on the top, speed is equals to lambda f. So frequency is v by lambda, so v by 2l in this case, because lambda is 2l. Here v f will be equals to v by lambda, which is 2, v, not 2l here. And here frequency will be V by again lambda which is 2L and 3 will go on the top. So this will be the frequency of these modes of vibrations.